uh, about a week and a half ago, three little girls were murdered by um, some psychotic guy. Many others, many other children and a few adults were hospitalized as well. And obviously, after an incident like that, the whole country mourns. It happened in Southport, which is like 20 minutes uh, outside of Liverpool, just on the outskirts of Liverpool. Uh, so obviously, many people in Liverpool were mourning and they held a vigil uh, to support the families, to pray for the uh, kids. But tragically, again, this incident was hijacked and these little girls' deaths were exploited by a few individuals to just see divi so division and um, further their political agenda. And that's kind of what we're going to talk about today. So was there misinformation going on that the, the, this attack was done by Muslims? Is yeah. that how it all started? And, yeah. and how, did they, how did they pick up though? That's what I don't understand. So, so as soon as it happened, reports started coming out that uh, it was a Muslim that did it. Not like verified reports, just people speculating as they always do. Whenever an attack happens, people speculate and say it's a Muslim. As Muslims, we're kind of used to it at this point. Um, it happened with that guy in Australia who looked a little bit brown. They said he was a Muslim. In fact, he wasn't a Muslim. Uh, so the same thing happened here. Loads of people started speculating. And then uh, a few very famous people, well-known people, started fanning the flames. Um, they started playing into these uh, conspiracy theories. Because of this, the police released a statement saying he was actually originally from Cardiff, uh, which annoyed them even more. They're like, there's no way he's originally from Cardiff. Like, we want to, we want his name to be released, all of that, which wasn't possible because he's under 18. And in the UK, unless a judge allows you to, you cannot release uh, the names of a minor who's committed an offence. Um, so yeah, it, it started from misinformation. A lot of very well-known people fueled that misinformation and now are backtracking like? and pretending they didn't. Like Andrew Tate, for example, uh, Nigel Farage as well. And uh, of course, Tommy Robinson played into it too at the beginning and he continues to sow division now. So, the really interesting thing, but it's not interesting, it's just really sad to be honest. So these three kids died, the family holds a vigil and you have people coming from different parts of the country with crates of beer, with alcohol to show support for children. And where do they show support for these children? Not outside of the vigil, not where it's meant to be, but outside of a mosque where they throw bricks at the mosque, where they attack police, set fire to a police van, where they're drinking alcohol. It, 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 like they're like on, it's like football hooligans after a football match. They completely exploited such a tragic situation and they were chanting who the F is uh, God, basically, but the Arabic term for God, which is obviously extremely uh disrespectful and um yeah people like tommy robinson retweeted uh all of those things and were like oh the people are finally fed up the people have finally had enough uh seeming to forget that three little kids have died here what has this got to do with the mosque other than your disinformation then what happened is the police came out and said he is born in Cardiff from Rwandan parents. He has no ties to Islam, but the conspiracy theories didn't stop. Um, Rwanda is a 95, some reports say, other reports say 97% Christian country, but they at that point they still said he's Muslim. They still said he came over on a boat uh, a year ago and was an illegal migrant, which just wasn't true. He was born in Cardiff, but it's, this dangerous um, rhetoric that we have seen for years now spread by uh, the right, not just in this country, but in America as well, that 
makes the attacks on Muslim communities uh, that we see now possible. Um, people yeah. like Nigel Farage, like Tommy Robinson, whenever Muslim people do something b- bad, they shine a spotlight on it. They highlight it every single time. So to their followers, it seems like, oh, they're doing so much bad. All the stuff that's wrong with the UK, it's their fault. And if we can remember a recent time in history where that happened to a group of people, it didn't end very well. It happened in the early 1900s. And uh, everyone remembers that. Everyone said never again. But yet these people are allowed to spew this kind of rhetoric and pretend that Muslims are the cause for all of the problems in this country and other countries in the world. It's, it's very unfortunate that this inf- this information picked up and the media is is also to blame for it mainstream media one of the things that really irritated me and let me down was anti-immigration rights don't call it anti-immigration rights call it they didn't even say they didn't even say rights they said uh protests Protests. to start with yeah protest well how is that protesting they they're destroying cities they're destroying mosques they're destroying innocent people's businesses who got who had nothing to do with this incident how is that mourning people number one and number two why is the word terrorism not used here it should be used here yeah, I, exactly they're 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 causing fear and terror in order to intimidate a population in order to further their political goal which is what they always talk about is anti-immigration and they spin this narrative of oh it's only illegal immigrants but the guy who committed the murder that stemmed all of this the murders not only was he not an immigrant he, he not only was he not an illegal immigrant he wasn't even an immigrant he was born in this country he was his parents immigrated here and we don't know whether they immigrated here legally or illegally They were Christian. He was a choir boy when he was younger. Yet these people choose to go and attack Islam regardless. And over and over, the conspiracies were getting debunked. Yet they shift the goalposts at first. Oh, it's Muslims' fault. Oh, no, sorry. It's illegal immigrants. No, it's just immigrants. He was none of those. Yet they continue to riot. They show their true colors. And I think... I think that there is... There's something I wanted to say to your previous point. Oh, yeah, the riots. BBC, so the main broadcaster in the UK, not only did they not call it like terrorism or anything, they called it the pro British protests in, you call in it one report. Pro British protest. <laughs> yeah. How is yeah. that pro Britain? The, the, and they called. The people, the counter-protesters, they call them groups of men chanting Allahu Akbar. Might, look at this framing. That's the scary. pro-British protesters versus the groups of men chanting Allahu Akbar. What is the average person watching that on the news going to think? Yeah, that has no critical thinking. Yeah. yeah. It's, it, then, it's... Go on, sorry. Sorry, are they exploiting these people? They, yeah. they, their problems come from poverty. They don't have the quality education, and these politics politicians who are basically, you know, taking all the money, all the you know, they have all the power to change things. They're like, no, I ain't gonna pay any more taxes. I'm not gonna take accountability. We're not gonna improve the system. Get the immigrants out. The immigrants has taken all your rights away. The immigrants have taken all your job opportunities away, and yeah, and th- these these powerful voices voices like Nigel Farage and Tommy Tommy Robinson, they they have manipulated this these people, and we finally like we always see that you initially you see like oh these people are in echo chambers they're not really like you know the, these are minority but when you see instances like this how that led to rights and stuff like that. We can't. We we have to be so vigilant of what people say online, and keep them accountable because this is the this is the consequences of letting these people just giving them platform, regardless of how damaging their views are. Like, and I wanted to ask you, like, you know, to an extent, like, cancel culture can be useful, right? That if mm. you give platform to people like Tommy Robinson and Andrew Tate this is what happens 
Yeah, to well, imprisoning someone like the whole justice system is basically cancel culture. It, it can be valid if someone's doing something wrong, punishing them for that can be valid. C cancel culture in the internet sense is kind of, I don't know, it's tricky. If you're inciting violence, if you're inciting hatred, there's a very strong case for you not being pushed and promoted by very credible individuals like Jordan Peterson promoting and pushing Tommy Robinson, as well as Elon Musk, exactly. the founder of Twitter, retweeting it. Fine, you can say what you want unless you stoke up violence, unless you incite violence and hatred. And Tommy Robinson is now going on this tirade saying, I never incited violence. 